I'm joined now by Republican member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis of New York, where there's a large Ukrainian-American community. Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining us. Let's jump right in. You blasted Russian President Vladimir Putin in a statement after Russia's invasion for what you called unprovoked attacks for no reason other than a tyrant's desire for power and territory at the great expense of freedom, bloodshed, and the destruction of innocent lives. But as Russia troops now close in on Kyiv. Do you think there's anything that will stop them from taking over Ukraine? Well, I think there's certainly uh, additional measures that could be put in place. I saw just a little while ago that uh, President Biden has implemented sanctions on Putin himself, with it, which I think sends an extraordinarily strong message, and he's been joined in that by the UK and by the EU. Uh, that is something that I had been calling for. I also think that we can still institute some crippling uh, economic sanctions. You know, we still have not placed sanctions on you know, oil, gas, minerals, mining. Um, we, the, 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 the Central Bank of Russia. So there are still some actions that can be taken. Uh, my only wish was that this was done prior to the invasion. For over a month, I had been calling for economic sanctions to be placed on Russia because we wanted to, it, them to serve as a deterrent. Certainly being reactive uh, is making it a little more problematic. I think the other thing, though, it's incredibly important that we work with our EU partners to provide uh, lethal and non-lethal um, weapons and equipment to uh, the Ukraine as they are fighting. The resistance is, is fighting, and they are fighting hard. And we need to make sure that they have the support to, to keep doing that. Uh, they are fighting for their freedom. They are fighting for their country. Uh, we should uh, be supportive of them. This invasion by Russia has threatened to disrupt global energy supplies, as you mentioned, saying that you said yourself just a, a moment ago that the U.S. Should, should look to be more energy independent. You've also called for ramping up our domestic energy production so we have less reliance on those other countries. But as you know, that's not likely to happen anytime soon. So are there any solutions that Congress should implement now to make any spike in gas and energy prices less painful for Americans? Well, it could happen right now, and, and that's the thing. Uh, President Biden today could uh, remove the ban he placed on energy exploration and production on federal lands, the leasing of the lands. Uh, there are areas, such as my colleague, uh, uh, Congressman August Fluger of Texas, who said that there is ample energy available today for production. Uh, so there are things that we can be doing right now, and certainly completing the key Keystone Pipeline is among those, but that would obviously take a little bit longer to construct. But when finalized, it will bring in more barrels uh, per day than we are importing currently uh, from Russia. So that would end our reliance on adversaries. And fi finally, we mentioned the large Ukrainian-American community right here in New York City, including uh, some who live in your district. What are you hearing from your constituents with family members back home in Ukraine? And is there anything Congress can do to help families of Ukrainian-Americans who have been forced to become refugees? It's, it's incredibly uh, tragic uh, to see these people lose their homeland, to lose, you know, perhaps their family's been divided at this point. Um, maybe they've lost their lives. It, we have to do what we can to assist uh, those individuals. Actually, right now, I'm working uh, with a family from my district uh, that is in Ukraine. The husband is an American citizen. His wife is a Ukrainian citizen, and they had applied for a uh, a, a visa over a year and a half ago for his wife uh, after they were married. And to this day, it has not yet been approved. And I think that expediting some of these visa applications that have been already in the pipeline uh, is critically important at this time. I've been very disappointed with the Department of State's inaction and um, not, and, and, and they're, they haven't been responsive in some of the requests that we've been asking them. We've, we've been getting a generic cookie cutter response to particular inquiries related to individuals that uh, live in my district. Um, and I am very concerned about that lack of action. Uh, so I urge the State Department, uh, I've, I've been speaking with my colleagues on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, so we can collectively urge the State Department to help these individuals. 
I would imagine there's going to be quite the backlog on those visa applications. We've spoken to a couple who's actually going through the same thing. Very tough situation. We can only hope this invasion ends soon and Ukrainians can get their lives back. Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.